Welcome to E3 Rehab. I'm Dr. Tony Camella, physical therapist. And in today's video, I'm gonna be providing you a general rehab framework for groin pain, or more specifically, adductor strains. This will include a progression for groin strengthening as well as running, if returning to running or playing a sport is your goal. Before reviewing the exercises, it is important to briefly touch on the terminology and definitions of groin pain since if it is not truly adductor related, then these exercises will not be the most appropriate option. For an overview of the possible causes of groin pain, we can look at a 2015 article by Weir and colleagues. Here, they define four clinical entities for groin pain, adductor related, iliopsoas related, inguinal related, and pubic related groin pain. Today, I will be focusing on adductor related groin pain, which is clinically defined by the presence of adductor tenderness and local pain on resisted adduction testing. An injury can occur to one or more of the adductor muscles. These consist of the pectineus, gracilis, adductor longus, adductor brevis, and the adductor magnus. Expectedly, these muscles adduct the hip. However, they also contribute to varying degrees of hip flexion, extension, and rotation. Understanding the function of the adductors is important since it influences exercise selection. The exercise progressions I'm going to review today are adopted from a 2020 article by Cerner and colleagues. The authors developed a rehabilitation program for elite male athletes looking to return to sport following an adductor injury. The key components of this program include a groin specific exercise protocol and a return to running protocol. Additionally, it includes sport-specific controlled training as a prerequisite for return to sport. Since this is highly dependent on the sport, position, etc., I will not be reviewing that today. I'm gonna to start by reviewing the four phases of the groin-specific exercise protocol, and then review the four phases of the return to running protocol. However, these are done simultaneously and can be progressed independently of one another, meaning you can be in phase two of the groin-specific exercises, and phase four of the running protocol or vice versa. Each phase will have a set criteria that should be met prior to progressing to the next phase. Before I start, a couple key points to note. First, depending on your goals, you may not need to complete the running exercises or all the phases of the groin strengthening protocol. And second, not everyone will have the same starting place. Depending on time of injury, severity, etc. You may start from the beginning, or it may be more appropriate to start with the more advanced progressions. Groin Exercises Phase 1 – Active Flexibility Leg swings into flexion and extension. Holding onto an object at your side, swing your leg forward and backward within a comfortable range of motion and speed, keeping the chest tall. Leg swings into abduction and adduction. Holding onto an object in front of you, swing your legs side to side within a comfortable range of motion and speed, keeping your chest tall. Hip circles. Stand with your hands on your hips and move your hips and pelvis in a circular motion at a comfortable speed. For each of these exercises, you will perform four sets of 20 repetitions on each side, three times a week. In order to progress to the next stage, you should have minimal pain with walking, and at rest. Groin exercises phase two, early resistance. In addition to the previous exercises, you will now begin to add resistance to this area. Resisted hip adduction. Strap a band or cable around the ankle and hold on to an object for balance. Start with the leg out and slowly adduct or pull your leg towards the standing leg. Slowly control it back to the start and repeat. Resisted hip flexion. Strap a band or cable just above the knee and hold onto an object for balance. Start with the hip extended and slowly flex your hip to about 45 degrees, keeping your chest tall. Slowly control your leg back to the start and repeat. Resisted trunk rotation. Stand with your feet just wider than your hips, the band or cable at about chest height and arms straight, keeping hips and pelvis facing forward Rotate through your trunk until the hands move to or just past your outside hip. Control your trunk rotation back to the starting position and then repeat. 
For each of these exercises, you will perform two sets of at least 20 repetitions on each side at a tempo of three seconds concentric and a three second eccentric at an appropriate intensity three times a week. In order to progress to the next phase, you should have no resting pain and be able to perform the resisted hip adduction exercise for 20 repetitions with less than two out of 10 pain. Groin exercises, phase three, load progression. For this phase, you will continue the previous exercises, but increase volume and intensity, as well as add in a single leg coordination exercise. While standing on one leg, swing the opposite leg through hip extension and flexion with the arms following a reciprocal pattern as shown. For this exercise and previous ones listed, perform three sets of 15 to 20 repetitions on each side with the same tempo. Perform these three times a week. In order to progress to the next phase, you should be able to perform the resisted hip adduction exercise for 15 repetitions with less than two out of 10 pain and have full range of motion during the active leg swings at a high velocity. Groin exercises phase four, high load, high speed. You will continue the previous exercises, but with more volume, higher intensity, and faster speeds, as well as add in two exercises. Copenhagen adduction exercise. Start on your side with the forearm on the ground and a partner holding the top leg at either the ankle or knee. Lift the body and the bottom leg up until the feet touch and the body is in a straight line. Slowly lower the pelvis and foot back down so the foot just gently touches the floor and repeat. Alternatively, you can perform the same exercise with the top leg on a bench or another stable surface. Kicking exercise or tension arc. Place a strap of a cable or band around one ankle while holding another cable or band in the opposite hand overhead. While standing on one leg, quickly move forward in a kicking and throwing motion, and then slowly take about three seconds to return back to the starting position. For these exercises and the previous ones mentioned, perform four sets of 10 to 15 repetitions on each side at a slightly faster speed, one second concentric and a three second eccentric. Perform these three times a week. In order to progress to on-field or on-court sport-specific training, the following criteria should be met. Pain-free palpation, pain-free maximum isometric testing at an outer range, pain-free maximal passive adductor stretch, pain-free resisted hip adduction exercise at a 10 repetition maximum, pain-free Copenhagen adduction exercise at 10 repetitions, and a pain-free T-test at 100% self-reported intensity. Non-specific groin exercises. In addition to groin-specific exercises, it is recommended to add in non-specific groin exercises on alternate days. These exercises should focus on hip extension, hip abduction, and targeting the hamstrings and calves. An example workout session would include deadlifts, lateral band walks, Nordic hamstring curls, and calf raises. These should be completed without any residual pain in the adductor region. Running phase one, running movements. You will start with some steps in place and then progress to slow running as tolerated. A ladder may be helpful for cueing step placement. For example, start with alternating steps in place. If tolerated, progress to moving forward, stepping two feet in each box. And finally, you can progress to one foot in each box. In order to progress to phase two, you should be able to jog pain-free at 30% of your maximal speed. Running phase two, slow running and side steps. Running, you will continue to run in a linear fashion and slowly build speed and duration. In addition, you will add in multi-directional movements and zigzags. Again, a ladder may be helpful for cueing some of the movements. Lateral shuffle. Start with small steps so each foot touches the same box. To progress, increase speed or distance by skipping a box. Side to side steps. Also known as the icky shuffle ladder drill, this exercise incorporates forward and lateral movement. Zigzag shuffles. Using cones as a guide, shuffle sideways at a diagonal angle towards one cone and then change directions shuffling towards the next one. 
Start at a comfortable pace, and to progress, you can increase speed and quickness of turns. In order to progress to phase three, you should be able to run pain-free for 15 minutes up to a 60% intensity and perform sidesteps and zigzag runs pain-free at a 60% intensity. Running phase three, progressive running and change of direction. You will now increase the intensity of running by focusing on shorter distances and faster speed. Start with 30 meter distances and build up speed as tolerated. Lateral shuffle, same as the previous phase, but you will increase speed and the step width by skipping one or two boxes. Zigzag shuffles. The zigzag shuffle drill from phase two can be progressed by incorporating shorter distances and more turns, faster speed, or even implementing a ball if appropriate. Zigzag turns. Same cone setup as the previous drill, but you will now run forward and then perform a sharp turn at one cone and then run towards the next cone. Repeat this at a tolerable speed. Acceleration and deceleration. Start at the first cone and accelerate forward towards the second cone. Decelerate and then run backward to the start. Repeat to the third cone and back, and then to the fourth cone and back. In order to progress to the final phase, you should be able to perform 10 straight 30 meter sprints pain-free at an 80% intensity, as well as perform the T-test pain-free at an 80% intensity. T-test. From the starting cone, run forward to the middle cone. Then shuffle to one side and touch the cone with one hand, and then shuffle towards the opposite side and touch the other cone. Shuffle back to the middle cone, and then run backward towards the starting cone. Running phase four, high speed running and change of direction. You will continue with the previous exercises, but progress to maximum speed. Running, continue with the 30 meter linear running intervals, but build up to maximum effort sprints. Lateral shuffle. Progress these to maximum width and maximum speed. Side to side steps. Progress these to maximum width and maximum speed. Zigzag shuffles. Progress these to maximum speed with and without a ball if appropriate. Zigzag turns. Progress these to maximum speed with and without a ball if appropriate. Acceleration and deceleration. Progress these to maximum speed change of direction and cutting. The goal of this phase is to expose you to cutting and change of direction at various angles, better preparing you for return to sport. The star drill is a good example. Start at the first cone and run to the middle cone, then cut and accelerate to one of the other cones on either side. Jog back to the first cone and repeat. To start, choose a designated cone prior to each run. To progress, you can make the drill more reactive. Start the drill, and just before you reach the middle cone, have someone call out your target cone. This makes the drill less predictable and more similar to sport. In order to progress to on-field or on-court sport-specific training, the following criteria should be met. 10 straight 30-meter sprints pain-free at 100% intensity, and pain-free T-test at 100% intensity. Okay, so there you have it. A long, comprehensive rehabilitation protocol for adductor strains. To summarize, you should first know if your groin pain is truly adductor related. Otherwise, these exercises might not be the best option for you. Understanding the anatomy and function of the adductors helps us create an appropriate program with gradual exposure of the hips to various directions, as well as trunk movement. If you're looking to return to running and or sport, then following both the groin specific exercise protocol and the running protocol is highly recommended. However, depending on your goals and activity, the groin specific protocol might be sufficient by itself. If you have specific questions to your individual needs or are looking to progress to a specific sport, Find a reliable healthcare provider to help. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, tap that like button, leave any questions in the comments below. And for more content, you can head over to our website at e3rehab.com where you'll find a blog, 
podcasts, and rehab programs. Thanks for watching. Peace.